Hey guys, Ken Smith, Ken Smith Fishing. A little bit of Rayburn fishing for you this week. Stick around. <laughs> okay, without going too far into this, we did not get to fish the Bass Champs on Saturday at Rayburn. We paid our entry fee. I had some personal stuff come up. Kevin had another event on Toledo Bend that he's trying to qualify for something else. So we paid our entry fee, so we're going to qualify for the championship, but uh, unfortunately we didn't get to fish. Uh, congratulations, by the way, to uh, George Glass and Trent Manuel. I don't know you guys, but great job. A little over 24 pounds to win the Bass Champs Tournament this week and won a bunch of money. And it looked like it took almost 16 and three quarter, I think, to get a check. So uh, obviously the lake's starting to fish much better. Not the giant stringers you saw when those fish, when those guys could catch those fish offshore. But uh, you're going to see from a little bit of fishing. I did, I did sneak in a little bit of fishing, even though I didn't get to fish the tournament Saturday. Uh, uh, well, actually, let's just go right through that. Let's go to some fishing, then I'll come back and give you guys some updates on upcoming stuff to look for on River. So let's go fishing, and I've got a couple ideas I want to share with you, or some just some things, some technique stuff, and just different things too. So here we go. I've been out here about an hour this morning, and as is absolutely typical. So I use voice recognition on my camera. So I do, it's on a loop, and that way you don't have to constantly turn it on, turn it off. And every once in a while, stupid thing will turn itself off. And when it turns itself off, things like this happen. <laughs> it's just a beautiful, beautiful fish. Look at the belly on that fish. That is a girl getting ready to come up. That is a girl getting ready to come up and do the deal. Ooh, that was fun. That's my second flipping bite this morning. First one I missed. That one I did. The six cent sprawn to split or not to split. I'm a splitter. Yes, I am. Can't help it. Split prawn works. We haven't talked about that bait much. It's, it's new this year. But what I am doing is I'm throwing it on that same little, uh, that's a three-aught hook. But golly, he was stuck good. <clears throat> that's just a keeper, but you saw I caught a better one on it a little earlier. And I just run it through and then I skin hook it right there. Boom. Double peg, so that's a six cents peg. Five eighths ounce, excuse me, that's a three eighths ounce and then another peg above it. We got a little bit of a, a non-windy area here. And you know, it's funny, I'm also a golfer, as a lot of you guys know, and how much we work on technique golfing. But I don't think a lot of us work on our technique fishing or don't think about it a lot. So I want to share something with you that I think now, as I've gotten older, um, you know, fatigue becomes an issue. And one of the things I see guys doing on occasion, especially young guys, is fishing with that rod butt out away from their body. I've talked about this before. Skeet Reese used to set the hook like this with the rod out away from his body. The problem with that is, if you ever get a bait hung up, you know one of the ways to get it unhung is to throw it slack, right? You pull it tight, you pop that line, and you throw that, that, that thing slack. Well, if you set the hook up here, there comes a point where that fish pulls back, and you're potentially going to throw that fish from slack. One of the ways to stop that from happening is to anchor that rod butt in your side or in your stomach or in your chest so that when you pull on it, you got an anchor on that bottom side. Well, same standpoint, 
when you're especially deep cranking or throwing moving baits, what you really want to do is you want to anchor that rod in your side. And what that does, it gives you two advantages. Number one, it gives you that solid point to set the hook from. But the other thing it does, it keeps you from stabilizing that rod and reel with your forearm and your hand muscles. And that's where that fatigue thing comes in, right? If all I got to do, and, and it won't take you long to feel this as you're doing it, is have that rod anchored there, then all I'm doing is pulling tension on the front of the, on the top of the rod back at me with my hand. And it doesn't cause as many muscle age in your forearm and in your hand. So when you're fishing, stick that rod butt in there. That's why we've gone to these long rod butts. Back when I first started fishing, we all used pistol grips. You got that long rod butt, put it in your side. Some guys will even put it on their forearm. I don't, I like having it in my side so that you've got that anchor point, both when you're reeling and also when you're setting the hook. You want this anchored somewhere. You don't want to be up here, the old Bill Dance hook set. You want it anchored in there somewhere when you pull on it, it'll cause you to lose less fish, get a better pull on the fish, and then of course a lot less fatigue throughout just a day of fishing. So a lot of guys have asked me, uh, over the last couple of years, actually, a lot of guys. So a lot of guys found my videos uh, based on uh, based on my map videos that I did. So I did those videos years ago, uh, the first set of them, which is most all the lake. And then I've updated that map video a little bit this in the last couple of years with a better camera, with a 4G camera, so you can see the the map. And I, I probably need to work on that a little bit more. But one of the questions I get asked a lot is, in one of my early videos, I referenced showing how to run around uh, up above the 147 bridge going up the Atoyak or going up the Angelina and guys are like hey I can't find that video and you can't find it because I never posted it and I didn't post it uh, really for, for two reasons uh, number one it would have been uh, a lot of waypoints because you, you come up the long cut and you got to make a corner and then you got to run around past Hanks and then you got to jog out in the middle of the lake and you got to run down the middle of the and it just would have been I mean it would have been an hour long video and Truthfully, it was just too much work because, uh, and by the way, I get nothing from these guys. I actually have to buy my own mask from them. But if you Google uh, Lance, Van Lance Vix Boat Lanes, I'm having camera fits. Uh, it burns up a lot of your memory. So, you know, probably if you're going to use it for Rayburn and you're not down here a lot, you'd want to download it. You'd want to put all your waypoints on a card so that you can clean your unit when you're done. But uh, you can buy that online. Again, just Google Lance Fix Boat Lanes. I know Bass Strike here in Zavala carries it as well. Lynn carries that card. So uh, any of you guys who want to run up uh, the ash uh, or want to get around the forest or the amber forest or the black forest, you know, and, and have safe routes to run around, uh, you can get that card. I also get asked a lot, do I trust that card? Uh, and the answer to that is, yeah, probably as much as I trust anything. Uh, I believe that card shows a boat lane going through the middle of the Black Forest, and there is not a boat lane going through the middle of the Black Forest. And I think it also may show a roadbed running across that you can run the Amber Forest, not something I would ever run. The other place I know for a fact it's incorrect is running up the Atoyak Arm. You run under the power lines, and you run up there, and it kind of floats to the right a little bit going up lake, and then there's a, a boat ramp on the right. I can't remember the name of that ramp, but then it makes a hard jog left, and then it makes a hard jog right. That hard jog right is not where it shows that. I was up there a few years ago, and the lake was about two or three feet low, probably two feet low, and there's big giant ones in that corner right there. So I would say once you get up the Atoyak, a quarter or a half a mile above uh, the power lines, you're on your own, even though you, I mean, you may have a little bit of feel a little bit of safety running those boat lanes but it's false safety because uh it ain't safe up there uh again now if we're at pool or above pool certainly a foot above pool you, it's safe but you get around pool or a little bit below pool and i i won't run that so but that arm i like fishing up there but that arm just scares me uh same as the ash arm and arm you know so and by the way that's something else you should know you're going to see guys running uh up the uh you're going to see guys running up, my camera keeps shutting up, up the Angelina arm, and you're going to see them running off those boat lanes every direction. They're not running, uh, there's not boat lanes that aren't on those chips. If you see guys running out across there, they're just trimmed up, puckered up, and, and you know, they run something enough times they feel like they can get away with it, which is what I do. But 
There's there's no official, you know, cut out boat lanes up here other than the main one uh, going up the Angelina and then, the, you know, a little ways up the Atoyak and a little ways up the Ash. So there you go, guys. I'm going to try to catch a few more fish. mouth of this is 56 degrees it's 61 in here and obviously the boys have moved up I caught that girl out there in the, in the warmer water I mean in the colder water she hadn't moved up yet that guy that was a fun bite that was one of those where I flipped it in there and he didn't bite it and I hopped it and when I hopped it it went Pink. and he is hooked right where you want to hook him bottom of the face. Nice little chunk. Got a comorant scar on his belly. I'm sure that's what that is. Almost healed. The prawn strikes again. Black blue prawn. Slippery little dude. Got to dig another one out. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed this week's fishing. I didn't, like I said, I didn't get to fish a whole lot. Just had a few bites out on the water. Just got to be out there for a couple hours as we kind of came back through Zavala on the way home from what we had to do with the family deal this weekend. So next weekend, the calendar's pretty light actually on Rayburn with the exception for those of y'all who fished the Outlaw Outdoors Sweet 16 Tournament. The championship for the Sweet 16 Tournament is this coming Sunday, that'll be the 15th. Now, the following week, you know, I talked about this a lot last year. The following weekend on the 21st is the Average Joe's Tournament. So that's the Outlaw Outdoor Average Joe's Tournament. If you and your partner combined have not won $1,500 on Rayburn this year, you can fish that tournament in 2020, which is most people actually probably still. But the idea behind this tournament is to kind of keep the, the guys who are just the local hammers who spend every weekend on the, on the lake out of this tournament. So the guys who are constantly winning can't fish this tournament. It gives you guys, I hear a lot of the guys from Dallas say, man, I'd, I'd love to go down there and fish, but I don't want to fish against all those locals. This is your chance to do that. It's only a $165 entry fee. One note, the first 75 guys to pay are boats one through 75. It's a trailering tournament, but those 75 boats have 30 minutes longer to get back to the weigh-in. So you have a little bit of an advantage. You fish the same amount of time, but if you trailer a long ways off, you have longer to get back to the tournament way in sight. So if you're going to fish that tournament, I would suggest getting your money in, even though it's two weeks out. Get your money in pretty quick so that you uh, you might be boat, or so that you can be boat one through 75 and uh, get to be in that tournament, you know, and, and come in a little bit, not, not come in a little bit later, but get to the tournament a little bit later. Uh, the other thing I want to mention to you is this next weekend, the 14th, Bass Champs on LBJ, that's the Central, that's their second tournament. So I'm, I would imagine they're going to have a real good turnout down there. Uh, Rayburn, as you saw, it looks to me like they're pushing a lot of water through Rayburn. It reached right out a foot high. It got to 165.4, and it's peeled back off. It's about 165.35, 165.33. So it's fallen a little bit less than an inch, but it's definitely coming back down. But there's, there's uh, forecast for rain Monday, which will be after you guys, after I release this. I'm recording this Sunday night, but after that, uh, the forecast for rain uh, Monday in Zavala. Again, I think Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So I think you're going to see Rayburn continue to be high. They're probably trying to push a little water downstream, getting ready for the remainder of the spring rains. So uh, 
I've not talked to a lot of guys. I'll, I'm going to post another video later this week. I'll talk to a couple of guys that did fish the Bass Champs and kind of get their thoughts, and I'll share those with you as well. I've got, uh, I did a video in the boat uh, today just talking about some of the equipment I use that I don't ever talk about. So I'm going to share that with you all later this week, so stick around for that. But for this video, I hope you enjoyed it. And again, I'll have that video up either Thursday or Friday of this week for you guys, and I'll also post whatever I hear about the fishing from the Bass Champs Tournament uh, in that video as well. So thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll see you all later this week.